Apple is working on a product that would change our lives entirely. This is honestly something that I'm looking forward to the most in the world of tech, and I do believe that this product will be even bigger and even more life-changing than the iPhone was. And that product is Apple's upcoming AR glasses, and here's everything everything you need to know about them. Also, that iPod Touch giveaway is still going. So if you wanna win an iPod Touch 7 Gen, the newly announced one, just follow on Instagram, add zone of tech, and then leave a comment on this post with the iPod Touch renders saying, why do you wanna win and which color would you pick? And I'll be announcing the winner on July the 1st via Instagram DM and story. And also check out our brand new store. Go to zoneoftech.com slash store uh, to check it out. We don't really have any merch, at least not yet, but we do have actual devices, laptops, smartphones, uh, audio equipment, camera gear, and all that. Uh, basically stuff that we have used in the office and the studio here and we no longer need so yeah if you ever to check it out unfortunately we're only shipping to the uk at the moment so stay tuned for maybe us shipping in the future or outside uk but yeah uh check it out let me know what you guys think and let's begin this really really awesome video that i'm really excited to talk about if you want to see more extremely in-depth tech content please please do subscribe and especially hit that notification bell since YouTube's notifications are uh, really, really messed up today. So yeah, that means a lot and it helps support the channel and videos such as this one. So thank you. Now, when the iPhone was launched back in 2007, it was such a futuristic and revolutionary device. So not only did it have the largest display on any mobile device back then at 3.5 inches, but it also had a full web browser experience, a first for a mobile phone. It had a capacitive touchscreen which supported touch from multiple fingers at the same time and gestures and more. Again, a first for a mobile device. It had advanced sensors such as an accelerometer which rotated the content based on how you were holding the phone. Again, a first for a mobile device. And with the introduction of the iPhone 3G in 2008, Apple launched the App Store which allowed developers to create third-party apps that actually took full advantage of all the sensors inside the iPhone. So we got games such as Labyrinth, like if you remember that game, uh, which took full use of the iPhone's accelerometer to navigate the metal ball into the hole. We also got crazy apps such as <laughs> iBeer and iMilk and more, but yeah, most importantly, we got a device that could be used for literally anything. A truly magical device. And this changed the entire mobile industry. Samsung wouldn't be the Samsung that they are today without Apple launching the iPhone. Same for Google and Android, same for LG and Huawei, and you know, companies such as OnePlus, they might not have even existed. The iPhone changed the way smartphones work and look, but unfortunately, it's been 12 years since the introduction of the first iPhone, and we haven't had a new iPhone since. I mean, yes, we've had brand new iPhones, improved versions of the first iPhone, and many other manufacturers have started making their own versions, but what I'm saying is that we haven't had a truly revolutionary device ever since 2007. Kinda. So we've had a single one, and that was VR headsets but we are finally getting another one, an even bigger one, as early as 2020, and that is AR headsets. So yeah, this is, this is especially the one that Apple's working on, this would be the true game changer. So in case you don't know, VR comes from virtual reality, and this is when you put a headset and you're fully immersed into the virtual world. You know, a video game, a movie, you name it, you're basically there. And it's honestly really, really good. Uh, even at the moment, you know, we have VR headsets such as the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, and even the PlayStation VR, those can make dreams come true, like literally. And then you also have mobile VRs like the Samsung Gear VR uh, and the Google Daydream VR. And these also work pretty, pretty well. I mean, almost, almost well. They're really, yeah, there we go. This is a bit too tight, but yeah, they're really, really awesome. Uh, you can check these out uh, using the link below in the description, but there's a few better ones that are coming uh, pretty soon. And those would be in terms of AR. So what is AR? Well, AR, on the other hand, it comes from augmented reality, and here you're still in the real world, so you're not using headsets like this one, you can still see the real world, uh, but you have floating elements that improve your real world. Real world, that's a, <laughs> quite of a tricky one to pronounce. Um, now, while I still find VR to be way better than AR for games, AR is way better than VR for productivity. You know, imagine having a pair of AR glasses on you and being able to put virtual monitors display anywhere you want in your room. How cool would that be? And then, you know, move them around anywhere you want and have any content on them. And then when you take the glasses off, boom, they're gone. They're, 
It's like, you know, they, they just weren't there at all. Or being able to accurately measure the dimensions of certain components for when you're, I don't know, assembling a car or a PC or whatever. Uh, not that you'll be doing that on a daily basis, but for people that do that on a daily basis, uh, this would be a true life changer. Or being able to constantly be connected to the internet, seeing your friends and family, and being able to search anything at any point in time without having to take your phone out of your pocket. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds incredible, and that is the future. Now, AR has been attempted before by Google, for example, with the Google Glass, but it's still not available for regular consumers. Microsoft has also tried it with the HoloLens, but it is still not available for consumers. So, what about Apple? Well, Apple does have quite a lot of patents showing their version of the AR glasses and how they would look like and how they would work like. And instead of these being a massive headset, so similar to what Microsoft has done with the HoloLens, it looks to be very similar to a standard pair of glasses. So something that consumers would actually wear on the street at work and just, you know, use anywhere they want. And we all know that Apple is really invested in AR at the moment. In iOS 11, back in 2017, Apple launched AR Kit. So this was a brand new framework that allows developers to easily create AR apps that take full advantage of all the sensors on your device. All you need is an iPhone from 2015 and newer, as well as an iPad from 2017 and newer. So basically anything with an Apple A9 or newer processor, and then uh, download any AR app from the App Store, and there you go, you're good to go. ARKit apps actually worked extremely well. And then we started seeing apps such as this brand new IKEA furniture app that allows you to place any furniture from their store into your home and see how it would look like. And the tracking was surprisingly good. And you know, the ability to bring the device closer and look even inside the furniture, that was, uh, that was amazing and, and just incredible. Then in iOS 12 in 2018, we got ARKit 2.0, which introduced features such as multi-user support, so more than one player, AR player, into the, the same game or app. Uh, and then we also got the brand new Measure app on iOS that can measure things very accurately in the real world. And I was surprised to see how well this thing worked. And we also got Quick Look and USDZ files that allow you to send AR files to anyone via iMessage and even embed them uh, on certain websites. Fun fact, Quick Look and USDZ files is what Apple actually used for the brand new Mac Pro AR demo on their website. And in case you haven't tried it, that demo works so, so well. It's amazing, you gotta try it, please. Try it, try it, it's amazing. Uh, you can see exactly how the new Mac Pro would look like in your home or your office. You can even take the top off and then look at the insides, the motherboard, uh, the CPU, the MPX GPU enclosure, literally everything. It's so, so, so detailed. And it's really something that you cannot do today with anything else other than AR. I mean, doing the same thing with your mouse in macOS is just not the same at all. And seeing this in AR is just like having a Mac Pro in real life. It's, it's just that, that good and that realistic. Now, what's really impressive about Apple's AR kits is that the object objects also create shadows. Yes, real-time, genuine shadows that map in the real world. How crazy is that? And what's even more incredible is that if you use this thing on a very high-end device, such as a 2018 iPad Pro uh, or the iPhone XS, for example, it can even measure the light in your environment and create reflections, yes, reflections on the AR object using light, light from the real world, uh, which is absolutely... I have absolutely no words for this. I don't know how Apple managed to do this. This is something extremely difficult to do, merging real life and AR and reflections and lighting. But yeah, it seems like Apple has managed to do the impossible. Now with iOS 13, Apple is also launching ARKit 3.0. And this one is taking things to the next level. So aside from shadows and reflections, ARKit 3 also supports motion tracking for people, and it can also detect people in scenes and obstacles, it, and it can avoid those. Yes, obstacle avoidance in AR is coming with iOS 13 and ARKit 3.0, which I don't even know how Apple is capable of doing this with just one camera module on the iPad Pros. But yeah, there we go. Somehow Apple managed to pull this off, which is incredible. This is amazing. And you know, none of the competition, Google cannot do this, Microsoft cannot do this. Apple can with just a single camera, which is insane. And all of this lays the foundation of Apple AR glasses. So they would use ARKit 3 or even ARKit 4, uh, and they would support all these astounding features. Now, you see, the, the problem with developing AR glasses is that, I mean, there's a few problems, but uh, the main one is that glasses would have to be extremely close to your eyes, obviously, and you would need some very high resolution displays. Then two, to drive those panels, and especially to drive all this AR functionality, you would also need a very powerful processor. And then three, a very powerful processor in such a small and thin and light device with such a small battery will make it die very, very quickly. You know, which is not great for a pair of glasses that you would want to wear all day long. 
seems like AR is pretty much impossible to do at the moment. Well, not really, because back in April 2018, we got our first look at the specs of the Apple AR glasses, thanks to an inside source that reported to CNET. And apparently because of the CPU limitations and the battery and everything that I mentioned before uh, with the glasses, Apple is actually working on running all of these intensive processes and everything on your iPhone and your iPad, and then streaming everything via a 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection to the headset itself. So yeah, this is said to be an entirely new connection, a new standard, by the way, called 802.11aY Wi-Fi, which actually focuses on short range high speed transfers of guess what 20 to 40 gigabits per second this is this is insane guys so this is the only connection that's available to a consumer at least uh, that can achieve speeds of 40 gigabits per second which today that's that's thunderbolt this is the speed this is wireless thunderbolt 3 which is insane i'm only concerned about um you know your health basically when you put that thing on your on your head, uh, because with Wi-Fi, especially with those speeds, you need to send a lot of packages to the device, to the receiver, and uh, yeah, not a lot of those packages will be captured. So you need to send significantly more, way more for 40 gigabits per second to be captured. So uh, when you put that thing on your head, that's gonna be quite, I don't, we'll see, hopefully it's not that bad, hopefully, because this thing is so cool. CNET's report also claims that Apple would be using a five nanometer processor in this. Now, uh, if you take a look at the Apple A12 processor that's inside the iPhone XS and the iPad Pro, uh, 2018. This one is based on a 7 nanometer process. And the Apple A13 processor, which is coming out in 2019, this will be based on the same 7 nanometer process as the Apple A12 was, just a more refined version. However, the Apple A14, which will indeed launch in 2020, is said to be based on a 5 nanometer process, which would, you know, perfectly match with the late 2020 release date for the Apple AR glasses. Now, another point that I made was that you also need some very high resolution displays on such a device. So let's take a look at the current VR headsets on the market, such as, for example, the Valve Index. This is the top top dog <laughs> that you can buy right now. So this one has uh, 1440 by 1600 resolution per each eye. This is really high, uh, but keep in mind, yeah, this is the highest on the market. So keep that in mind. Now, according to CNET's reports, Apple plans on having an 8K display on this thing and also 8K for each eye. Pretty much a 16K display um, on this thing, which is absolutely... Please, Apple, do that. I'm very skeptical of this, by the way. I really doubt that Apple, uh, Apple's A14 processor will be able to drive that, but we'll see. Uh, if it's true, then this would indeed be the best headset on the market in terms of display resolution uh, by, I don't know, 10 years ahead of the competition, maybe even more than that. And yeah, at that 16K resolution, you shouldn't be able to see any pixels at all, which is, again, something that we do not see on, on any VR or AR headsets on the market today. And CNET also reported that Apple would be developing a brand new operating system called ROS, or Reality Operating System. Uh, they'll be controlled via touch panels on the side of the, the device, uh, voice activation, and even head gestures to interact with the AR glasses. Now, Tim Cook himself did say in many interviews that he genuinely does believe that AR is the future because it allows you to be present in the real world and have some virtual elements that can significantly improve your experience. And yes, I do agree. I do believe that AR is indeed the future. And we've actually had some more reports back in 2017 claiming that Apple has a massive team of 1,000 plus engineers working on a secret project on AR in Israel. Uh, so yeah, we know that Apple is very serious about AR. And aside from their internal team, Apple has also purchased quite a number of AR and VR related companies. So they purchased Econia Holographics in 2018, uh, which was working on the world's first available, commercially available at least, holographic display for smart glasses. So that was really interesting. And then they also purchased VR Vanna in November 2017, which also focused on VR and AR. And they also purchased PrimeSense in 2013, which is actually a 3D uh, body sensing firm. So they focus on 3D depth tracking and body tracking and that kind of stuff. Uh, and this company, PrimeSense, was actually the one responsible for the development of Microsoft's Kinect platform. Remember that, the Microsoft Kinect? Yes, they, uh, they pretty much did that. But yeah, there's many more AR and VR companies that Apple has bought. It's about 20 of them in total. Um, and then Ming-Chi Kuo, one of the most accurate analysts when it comes to Apple leaks, aside from the Mac Pro design in 2019, uh, which we still didn't get, hopefully we are getting that. But yeah, aside from that, he was very, very accurate. And uh, he reported that Apple will start mass producing their AR glasses as early as Q4 2019. 
and that they would be released in 2020, most likely towards the end of the year. That would be my prediction. He didn't really specify when, but I would say the end of the year. And interesting enough, he did say that they would be marketed as an accessory to the iPhone rather than a brand new product, which pretty much confirms seeing that report and my prediction of how the glasses would stream data from the iPhone rather than, you know, having all the tech inside of them. So yeah, in reality, Apple would not be able to put an Apple A14 processor inside of this, at least I don't think so, but it could easily put a streaming chip that would take all the data from the iPhone that would be in your pocket and then send it over to the device. So the only thing that we haven't really talked about or heard about is the design. How is this thing going to look like? You know, it's a pair of glasses, so it should look quite nice. Well, Apple does have a lot of patents that show both a regular pair of glasses and a pair of glasses with a straight uh, top frame. And most of the patterns do show that design, so we actually modeled our own concept based on that. So here's the full zone of the concept of how we believe Apple would design these. Uh, the Apple AR glasses based on all the leaks and patterns that we've seen. So on the front, you would have that massive one single piece of glass 8K display panel. Uh, and when you look at the glasses from the outside, they would just look like regular glasses do. But on the inside, this is where the magic happens. This is where you'll see the aero display. Uh, this is where you'll see things such as maps that when you're navigating and everything that I mentioned before, all the apps, uh, full internet access, talking to your friends, uh, navigation, music, all that will be just there when you look at the glasses or through the glasses in this case. Now, when it comes to tracking, would you need cameras on this thing? So the more cameras, the better the tracking it would be. Now, I believe a good number is actually three of them on the front and then two on the side of each frame. So in total, that's a, yes, a total of seven cameras on this thing. This way, the glasses will be able to track everything that's happening in front of you on your sides and pretty much everything aside from what's happening, you know, behind you. Uh, this could actually be very useful for, let's say you're crossing the street and then a car comes very quickly from the side. The glasses could be programmed to alert you and warn you quickly so that you move away and, you know, you avoid an accident. So I think this could work uh, in theory, but we'll see. Maybe, hopefully, Apple do implement this. Now, same as with the Google Glasses, I do believe that these would include some sort of bone conduction audio system. So we've actually included ours right at the very end on both sides. So yeah, that's the black ending right there. And when it comes to charging, we've included something similar to the smart connector that Apple uses on the iPad Pros. So the cable itself would be magnetic, so same as on the Apple Watch, or Apple could even make a nice stand for these to charge in. And we've actually included these in multiple places. So two on the top, on each side, and then two on each frame, side frame, uh, so that no matter what case or stand you use this, closed or open for the glasses, yeah, the glasses could still charge. The three holes that you see on each side, uh, those could be used for ventilation if needed. If not, they do look quite nice from a design standpoint since they do match the grills that we made on the top of the glasses. And these grills are the actual vents for cooling the CPU. This is in case Apple does include the Apple A14 processor. Uh, if not, then we would only see a single low power streaming chip, like I said before. And then in that case, we would no longer need all that cooling and the frame, the whole frame uh, could be made way, way, way thinner. And you've also included microphones, so two on the top and two on each side for capturing the audio from every angle that the cameras also capture the video from. But yeah, this is just our take on how we believe that Apple could build the glasses based on all the patterns that we've seen. But of course, that the final version that Apple releases would most likely look very different to this. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think of our render and feel free to follow our second Instagram page Obviously, our first one as well, add Zone of Tech, but the second one is Zone of Concepts on Instagram for more, you know, concepts. And then also subscribe notifications, hit the bell icon for more Leaks and Rumors episodes uh, such as this one. And this is why Apple, with their upcoming AR glasses, truly do have the chance of changing the world and our lives again. So I'm extremely excited for this and I cannot wait to try and use it. Apple, if you're watching this video, I would love a sneak peek. I won't make a video about it, but yeah, I would love a sneak peek. Email me. Yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the AR glasses and also how would you how would you use these? For example, I would use them mostly, I mean, 90% just for work, having displays and all that, that would be insane. Uh, and being able to access everything anywhere I am without having to open up the a device. So that's how I would use it, but let me know how uh, you would use it. Again, don't forget to subscribe to notifications and don't forget about the uh, iPod Touch 7 Gen giveaway. Yes, that's happening. It's still it's still happening. Uh, it ends on July the 1st, and all you have to do is just be a follower on Instagram, at of Tech, the main page, and then leave a comment on this post saying, why do you want to win a, an iPod Touch 7 Gen, and also which color, and I'll be announcing the winner on the 1st via Instagram, Story, and DM. But yeah, thank you for watching. This was an amazingly interesting video to do. I cannot wait to do more videos like this, which is pretty much every video. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.